What's up, guys, and welcome daily theologians. Is the Bible the word of God? Are there other books that are also God's word? Can we trust the Bible, and why does it matter? When we hear the Bible preached, why is it that we believe it and others reject it? Well, you're not going to want to miss this one. Stick around as we have Dr. MacArthur and Dr. Steve Lawson on this topic today. Stick around and check this out. So it's no surprise that the authority of the word of God is the first thing attacked. And often this attack starts in Genesis. So we need to start at the beginning and we need to recognize the folly of the worldview that says nothing created everything. Here's Dr. MacArthur going toe to toe on Larry King. Yeah, well, I think intelligent design is the only possible scientific position to hold because we have intelligence in the universe, it has to come from intelligence. Because we have complexity, it has to come from complexity. The silver bullet, Larry, is DNA. Before an understanding of DNA, uh, there was a lot of confusion and a lot of belief in evolution. It was like the emperor's new clothes. It was really naked, but thought it was dressed up. DNA has, I think, spelled the end of traditional naturalistic evolution, which essentially says complexity comes out of simplicity. It can't happen. The silver bullet is not a single example of reproduction leading to an increased amount of genetic material right. necessary to produce a more but complex it, organism has ever happened. As someone religion, religion though, you can't prove Adam and Eve, can you? Oh, I, don't, I don't think you can prove Adam and Eve, except right. that you know somebody so was you there believe, to begin. You believe it. Yeah, well, we're, we're talking about two different things. Intelligent design is the only rational way to view right. the universe Somebody Linda. intelligent made it. Religion does, does and it who that intelligence you? is. Does it ponder you who made the intelligence? Who well, created I, the creator? I accept the Bible mean. as the source, the authoritative source that tells me it was God. And something or someone has to be eternal. And the Bible says it is God who is the eternal one. In order to have anything at all, you must have an uncaused first cause. Whatever system you take, there must be something in the beginning or there would be nothing. Out of nothing, nothing comes. So we know in the beginning there must be something ontologically different than the material that we live in because material is created, material is not eternal, and thus God is spirit. The Trinity has always existed. But a bing, but a boom, there you go. But look at DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, uh, is really the building block of life. They call it the book of life, and no book could write itself. This is an incredibly complex code, and I believe it, it's like a 4D code. Like it changes and it has all this information in it that codes for height, eye color, uh, features, things of that nature that are passed on from the original uh the original parents, Adam and Eve, that God created Adam, then made Eve. So uh, male and female, he created them in the beginning. So this is essential because when you recognize that God is the creator, then you just have to say, well, who is God and which God and where do I look? Are all books from God? And of course, the answer here is no. But Steve Lawson is going to give us just a little bit of background on our authority as the word of God. And then I'll explain why this is rational, reasonable, and supernatural. You this question, why do you believe that the Bible is the Word of God? Why do you believe that this book is not just another book? Why are you convinced that the Bible is a supernatural book written by our sovereign God? That is a very important question before each and every one of us here today. And from a divine perspective, we believe that the Bible is God's Word because its author, the Holy Spirit, has borne witness to our spirit and to our hearts that this book contains the very voice of the living God to us. It is the Holy Spirit who has convinced us of the veracity of Scripture. The Spirit has brought its inward testimony into our hearts, and He has persuaded us that this book is like no other book in the world, that this book is God's book. And this is an inside witness that the author himself, the Holy Spirit, has brought home to our hearts. 
But this does not mean that there are no rational supports for this conviction. As there are many sound evidences and many convincing proofs that the Bible is God's Word. Our faith is built upon facts. The foundation of our faith is this book. And there are many convincing and compelling reasons why we believe that this book is like no other book. Now, it still requires a step of faith. But I trust that as a result of our time together for this session, that you will see that it is a reasonable step of faith. In this message, I want to present the case why the Bible is God's Word. The rational argument should be known by each one of us here today. There needs to be more going in our heads than simply, I was raised this way, or I was brought up this way, or I went to VBS as a child, and I just always have, a, have believed that this book is the Bible. There needs to be some strong pillars that uphold our convictions that the Bible is the very Word of God. So I want to lay out for you ten reasons why we believe the Bible is the Word of God. I would urge you even to write these down in your Bible, to have these inside the front cover, on the back cover, as a reference point to come back to again and again that, yes, this is why I am persuaded that the Bible is the Word of the living God. And reason number one, we want to begin at the most basic entry-level place. And number one is the direct claims of the Bible. The Bible is authoritative in all matters that it addresses. And this includes its own direct claims about itself. The Bible actually claims to be the Word of God. This is not something that we are hoisting onto the Bible. And when a defendant is brought into a courtroom, he is allowed to testify for himself. In this passage, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16, we read, all Scripture is inspired by God. And the Bible claims not to be the word of men, not to be the word of culture or society. The Bible claims to be God-breathed. The ESV translates it, breathed out by God. This word, inspired by God, these three words, come from one Greek word, theonoustos. Theos for God. Noustos is breath or spirit. Theonoustos means God breathed. So when you think about this standard, there's no higher standard than God. To whom would you go? What evidence do you need beyond the word of the author? Now, this is a supernatural transformation. And this is something that the unbeliever that does not have the Holy Spirit will never submit to the word of God. This is why a good question, a diagnostic question to ask people is, are you reading your Bible? Are you reading it daily? Do you love God's word, because the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. Well, the Holy Spirit is also the interpreter of the Bible. He gives us understanding. That's called illumination. And because the Bible is inerrant, it is also true. The veracity of Scripture has to do with the truthfulness of the Bible, whereas the inerrancy has to do with the original autographs being without error. Now, the Bible we have today has some copious mistakes, but none of those contradict or put any doctrine in question. Uh, and we have so many manuscripts and so many pieces that it's like a jigsaw puzzle that only God could put together. Now, ultimately, our trust in the word of God, number one, is based on the author. There's no higher standard. Who else would you go to other than God himself? Thus says God. Now, just because a book says it's from God doesn't make it so. But the Bible is unique, different, and authoritative. In fact, the authority of the Holy Scripture obligates belief in them. You say, well, give me evidence that the Bible is true. No, you're the one that is in the error here. Uh, you're calling God a liar. 
Okay, so this is a big problem. This authority does not depend on the testimony of any person, any apologetical ministry. It does not depend on Jeff Durbin. It does not depend on Saiten Brutenke. It does not depend on Steve Lawson. It does not depend on Dr. John MacArthur. It does not depend on R.C. Sproul, but on God, the author alone, who is truth itself. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Jesus is truth the way, the truth, and the life. God is truth. In him, there is no darkness. Therefore, the scriptures are not to be received. Excuse me. Therefore, the scriptures are to be received because they are the word of God. Point number 10. The supreme judge for deciding all religious controversies and evaluating all decrees and counsels, opinions of ancient writers, human teachings, and individual interpretations in whose judgment we are to rest is nothing but the Holy Scriptures delivered by the Spirit. In this, the Scripture, our faith, finds its final word. Now, there's much misunderstanding here about sola scriptura. It does not mean that we only use the Bible. For those of you that think that, that's not what it is. The doctrine of sola scriptura means it's our final authority, that it's the highest authority, that it is self-authenticating, and that we use the clear passages to interpret the unclear passages. But we learn from church history. We learn from creeds and confessions. We learn from councils. These are gifts that God has given throughout the ages, but we test them against the Bible. The Bible is the testing point, or the the word canon is a measuring rod uh, by which we judge all things relating to truth. And so uh, this statement, the London Baptist Confession itself is derived exegetically and uh, from the Bible, but it's still uh, held up against the Bible from the Bible. And that's how you do hermeneutics and teaching. So this is a giant truth bomb that Steve Lawson is delivering here. The word of God is self-authenticating. It's our only authority. It's really the one note of this channel. The Bible is God's word. And thus the gospel that we learn about in that Bible is trustworthy, true, and must be believed, must be believed. Since humanity brought itself under the curse of the law by its fall, it pleased the Lord to make a covenant of grace. In this covenant, he freely offers to sinners life and salvation through Jesus Christ. On their part, he requires faith. You are required to have faith in him that they may be saved and promises to give his Holy Spirit to all who are are ordained to all who are ordained to eternal life to make them willing and able to believe. The faith you have is a gift of God. Repentance is also a gift of God. One of the problems here is people don't have fine points of theology. They cannot delineate the covenant of grace, grace producing faith and repentance from faith and repentance itself, from penance. All of that is a hodgepodge mess because uh, people have equivocated on terms. But the truth is the truth will set you free. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He lived a perfect, sinless life, born infinite, held that, died, and rose. And the word theonoustos is the Bible is God-breathed. It's as if God himself is speaking. So to disobey or disregard the word of God is to disobey or disregard God. Now, none of us understands the Bible perfectly. None of us understands the Bible 100% correctly. What? but we do understand it sufficiently. There's a difference between fully and sufficiently. In fact, God is infinite. And if you think you can understand the infinite apart from the infinite Holy Spirit, interpreting the things that are infinite so that you can understand them sufficiently, you have not yet begun to think about this issue. The reason we understand it is because the Holy Spirit is God himself and he helps us to understand. He helps us. Now, this doesn't mean that it doesn't require uh, study and, and work to understand the Bible, but we use the clear passages to interpret the less clear, and uh, we can understand it sufficiently at different levels based on our giftings, abilities, and things of that nature. So it's not that all people must understand it to this high level, but there are certain essentials like the deity of Christ, like the Trinity, like the perfect life, death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man Jesus Christ that must be received by faith and repentance. You must turn from self and sin and put all of your trust in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man Jesus Christ. And this is all a gift of grace. The problem here is that people do not understand that grace is an actual life-giving work of the Holy Spirit in the elect. It's not a potential. It's not a force. It's not something that God did his part. You do your part. It's all of God. It's all a work of God that you believe that the Bible is God's word. People that don't believe the Bible is God's word will quickly find themselves outside of Christianity and outside of orthodoxy. It always slides that way because the Holy Spirit is the one keeping us, leading us in what is true, right, and good. And all other books are from Satan. Sorry, it's true. They're not of God and they must be rejected. All other religions are false because the Bible alone is true. You don't like that? Take it up with the author. Thank you so much for watching. Take a moment and hammer that like button. Like the 95 theses and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think 
is the most compelling reason. And if you were an atheist, let me know what uh, you think, humanly speaking, convinced you that the Bible is true. Thank you so much, and God bless.